Here's the new 2022 Honda CRV. The last eight years, they've sold over 300,000 of these every year in the United States. Now, these things were originally made in the 90s. They're kind of ugly, then. They're sharp looking cars now. But you have an awful lot of choices and they've done a lot of stuff over. Now he drove it over here, he got better than the rated gas mileage. He got 40 miles a gallon and considering it's a relatively up in the air SUV, we'll look under the hood. We see a four cylinder engine. This is the conventional engine. As you can see here, it is a 1.5 liter and it's turbocharged. Hybrid comes with a two liter. I know I'm not the biggest fan of a small engine with a turbo, but on the other hand, it's a Honda. They've been making engines for a long time. They're really the number one manufacturer of internal combustion engines in the world. They've been working on turbos for quite some time. As long as you use that GF6 oil that's made for this engine, these have not had any oil dilution problems that the earlier ones had. It tells you here, 0 W20. Just use the GF6 oil, that's 0 W20. Doesn't matter which brand, as long as you buy a quality brand, that is a standard GF6. I've got customers with them, they aren't having any problems with them. Now, a lot of people will say, well, should I get this or should I get the hybrid? Well, the hybrid version of this on the highway only gets one mile gallon better than this. You can pay a lot of extra money and you're going to have a lot of extra technology that's going to break if you keep your cars two, three, four hundred thousand miles. But on the other hand, if you drive a lot in the city, stop and go, the hybrid regenerates electricity, it's more efficient. You'll get anywhere from 15 to 18 miles a gallon better with the hybrid. So let's say you're an Uber driver in town or something, you're much better off buying a hybrid. But if you're a normal driver, you're probably better off getting a non-hybrid, less technology, still gets phenomenal gas mileage for an SUV. Honda wheels, but it's an upgrade. He didn't like the original flowery design. I kind of agree with him. I think the white and the black really pop off of each other. And he got white because he lives in Tennessee that reflect a lot of the heat. Strangely enough, he works for the Navy in Tennessee, so you figure that one out. There's also a naval base in Albuquerque, New Mexico, but the military industrial complex works in strange ways. This is front wheel drive. It's not all wheel drive. Most people don't need all wheel drive. You really don't need in Tennessee. It doesn't snow much here at all. Maybe a little, but front wheel with snow tires will work perfectly fine. My mother drove around in Buffalo with the Toyota Corolla with no snow tires on it in the winter, and they never got stuck. There are plows out there that do plow things, you know? You don't need all wheel drive. If you want it, you can get it. It's your money. You're gonna get worse gas mods. You're gonna pay more for the car. Maintenance is gonna be a little more heavy. So if you don't want that, don't waste your money. Look inside. He got cloth seats. You know why? He told me he doesn't want to burn his butt while he's wearing shorts. <laughs> and that is a smart move. Plus, I've seen these with half a million miles on them. Seats still looked okay. Who cares? They don't look bad at all, especially these black ones. They look nice. There's a lot of space. That's what these things are about. They really are utility vehicles. You got the usual nice space here. You can hide cramps so people can't see it. Then you just move the seats forward and you carry all kinds of crap around. I got a customer down the street has one. He puts a kayak in it. Sure, it sticks out a little, but the bungee cords hold it in. You can carry a lot of stuff with these. They have not shirked and shrunk them inside so they don't have the space. They still have a lot of space inside. And as we sit down and shut the door, Come on, it's a Honda, you know it's gonna start up. And they've made their screens much better than they used to be. You can see it's got a pretty large backup camera, gives you a good view. The usual controls on the steering column so you don't crash. And it's got something I really like. You got the tachometer you can see at the top, and you got the speedometer right there. You're looking at it like in a conventional car. You're not like in a Tesla, Looking over to a giant screen that takes your eye off the road, you're right here. It's got a sunroof. If you live in a cold climate, in the summer that's fun. And this has got nice fall wood. It's not wood, but it looks like wood. It's nicely appointed. And of course, the more gas mods you want to get, you can push it there. Then you see, you're in economy mode. Economy off, economy on. I'm not really a fan, but it also has a brake hold on it. USB ports that people want these days. It's adjustable. You can put it where you want. You can easily get the stuff. It's Honda, so it's got killer AC. Let's take it for a spin. It's got a decent built-in GPS. And yes, as you're driving, what do you notice? 
It's nice and high up in the air. Yeah, it doesn't feel too boxy like it's gonna flip over. Now you might wonder, how does it get such great gas mileage? Well, it's only a 1.5 liter engine and turbos do ram more air in the engine, but a lot of it has to do with the transmission because it's not a conventional transmission. It is a CVT transmission, but it is designed and built by Honda and they do a pretty good job with them. The handling is fine for a little SUV. The brakes are perfect. The ABS system works fine. Got a few rattling bottles in here. Drinking water on the trip because it's hot today, but other than that, it's a very quiet vehicle. Now, he told me that he's never ever floored it, but he gave me permission. So, since he's a major, yes, sir, I'll floor it. <laughs> We're going around the bend and it handles quite well. So, here we go. We stopped and now we're going to floor it. And you can tell it's a CVT. Now it's picking up. And it's got decent acceleration. There's no arguing that because it's got a turbocharger in it. Now you notice it's not shifting up and down because it's a CVT. It doesn't really shift at all. But as you can see, even though I'm driving like a maniac, it's making this average gas mileage go down. It was at 40 and now it's gone down to 39.8. Now he drives in an eco mode, so push the eco mode button. Now it's in eco mode. Now we'll see what happens. It really didn't take that much acceleration away. With that extra lift being an SUV somewhat higher up in the air, hey, you feel secure in this thing. You don't have to worry that you're going to get stuck in some little rut or that, you know, it snows too much and the snow's too deep. Realize that the super high gas mileage ones, you live in a snowy area, you got to think about that. There's my son just bought one of those new Toyota Sienna hybrid vans, right? And it gets phenomenal gas mileage, but it's really low to the ground. And if it did snow a lot, he wouldn't be able to drive because it would turn into a little snow plow. The front of the car would be plowing snow the whole time. If you live in areas like that, you really want something like this that's a little bit higher. The dash is perfectly designed because it fits in the hole of the steering wheel. You see everything. Nothing is hidden. There's no hidden parts. Everything is open and obvious to read. To make steering wheels some weird shape like Tesla's, you can still make nice little round ones as long as the dash is designed with the steering wheel in mind so you don't lose any type of visibility. It doesn't particularly oversteer or understeer when you're taking corners. It's a pretty well thought out vehicle. You got to realize they've been making them for six generations. So as with many Japanese companies, hey, they just perfect them over time. Now, if you wondered how Honda sold over 300,000 of these for each of the last eight, nine years, realize a couple of things. One, they're all made in the United States. And two, realize it's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. For many people, the Honda Pilot is too big, but the Honda HRV is too small. Well, for them, the CRV is just right. I agree too. Like I said, I'm always a little fishy about little engines that are turbos. On the other hand, this isn't a Fiat or GM product. This is a Honda product. Their engines generally last forever if you take care of them. Now, this is a Toyota Tacoma, so of course, it's not going to really have any problems for quite some time. It's only got like 15,000 miles on it. It's a four-cylinder one. It's got the little back with the tiny little baby seats for miniature people <laughs> basically it's for storing tools and stuff it's the same as my son's old truck only it's got all kinds of tools in it and garbage in the back we open the hood one of the most dependable engines toyota ever made now it does have intelligent variable valve timing but being a 2020 it doesn't yet have all that insane dynamic force technology that Toyota's put in their new engines that yes, the new ones do get better gas mileage, but it's at a level of technology that would blow your socks off. I would just put a bet on any of these that these older ones, and it's 2020, but it's still somewhat of an older design, will outlast those modern ones by far. It's so much simpler. It has less pressure in the fuel injection system. It's just a more basic design vehicle that's been proven to the test of time. Check this out. We're talking old school. It's got a actual fan, a mechanical fan with a four banger. 
There's plenty of working room. Oh, no, really? That's kind of a moot point because Toyos hardly ever break. Getting there and doing some heavy duty work may never happen if you change the oil every 5,000 miles with synthetic oil. It may never break down. Being the old school design, it's got a mechanical water pump. Another tried and true simple design. Let's put on our thinking caps. How well does hot coolant mixed with hot water go with electric water pumps? <laughs> <laughs> yes, electricity and water aren't exactly things that go together that well, and eventually they will break and they will cost more money to fix. Sometimes technology gets a little bit too far advanced for somebody who wants something that's going to run forever and not have hardly any problems at all, and anybody can fix it. You can fix this with normal hand tools. You start getting to electronics, you need a guy like me, some fancy scan tools, a big knowledge of electronics, freeze frame oscilloscopes. They've gotten to that level of technology. Well, this thing unplugs on the top. It does have a plastic intake manifold, but they all do that these days. And now this is a four cylinder, 2.7 liter engine. It has a regular fuel injection system. The V6 has come with the direct fuel injection system, which is a lot more pressure. And believe me, it will wear out faster. Now, I'm not talking wear out fast like a Ford EcoBoost system. They're not turbocharged. There's no way it's going to last as long as something that's only got 40, 55 pounds pressure versus over a thousand. It's only common sense. They will wear out faster. And that's one of the strange anomalies. If you get the V6 engine version and you drive slow, which nobody's going to do, but if you did drive slow, you'll actually get about a mile a gallon better gas mileage on a highway with the V6 versus this. The V6 has direct injection, a dynamic force engine. It's a very complex system with a lot more horsepower in the V6 engine and can tow more. But at what cost? These systems have been known to go a million miles. The new ones, we'll find out, but I doubt they'll go a million miles trouble free with all that pressure in them. There's just too much technology. I've already seen some problems in some of the new Toyotas with that electric water pump system where they're having overheating problems because everything's electronic. And if you know anything about electronics, if it can break, it will. And since it's all software, sometimes it's software problems, sometimes it's hardware problems, but it's a lot simpler to have a pump that runs off a belt that goes hundreds of thousands of miles than one that's controlled by a computer that has an electric pump soaked in hot coolant in an engine all the time. It's only logical. And yeah, you go inside, they're relatively spartan. It's a little pickup truck. It's a Toyota, so you know it's gonna start right up. And it has a six-speed automatic, which you can either let shift itself, or if you want, you can shift up and down using the lever itself. And of course, they all have their backup cameras on it. It's a pretty basic one, but you see what you're getting. It's not a fancy one that'll show you all the different angles, but it works perfectly fine. And it has cloth seats. Looks like they have a dog. I see dog hair. <laughs> cloth seats will last forever if you take care of them. It's also a pickup truck, so no sunroof on this thing. Just a nice big back window you can look out of. Nice and high, great AC. Now everything can be done off the steering wheel if you want. As you can see under here, there's no front wheel drive. This is a classic pickup truck with a big old differential in the back. And it's also set up electronically to have a limited slip differential so you don't get stuck anywhere. You can see a solid frame truck. This isn't like a Bronco Sport with a unibody. This is an actual frame. These things can go through a lot and still come up smelling roses. And what everybody in a pickup truck wants, a full size spare, not some stupid little donut or no spare at all. You hang it down here so it doesn't take up space in the bed. And speaking of the bed, they put decent liners in these. Heck, my son's ancient one where the frame was riding away in Boston. The liner still looks brand new. <laughs> they did have frame problems in the past. Not anymore. They figured that out. They treat them so they don't rust anymore. Now he's got a little bit fancier wheels on it because he wanted to make it a little fancier. But really, you want to make it look fancier? You don't want to pay the Toyota dealer. They charge too much for that stuff. You can buy aftermarket stuff forever. They've been sold for so long. There's so much aftermarket. You want a fancier stereo? You can get Androids to blow these things away. 150 bucks. I mean, you don't pay the top dollar stuff for them. You want fancy wheels? Go out and buy them. Put them on yourself. You got all kinds of choice there. There's an aftermarket insanity for these things. But unlike the older Tacomas, that tended to be a little staid and boring, these have a good style to them. So you really don't have to change the headlights. 
and the grill. They look good the way they are. So let's take it for a spin. We're nice and high up in the air. The classic rear wheel drive pickup truck. And for a truck, it's relatively quiet. I mean, it's a new truck, but it's not going bangity bang over the bumps. And it handles good. It's not a race car. It's a little pickup truck. And it handles quite well for a little pickup truck. The brakes are perfectly fine. ABS. All that stuff, traction control. We'll take it out the country road here. We'll get to our little drag strip. We'll try something different. We'll put it in first gear and we'll take off. We'll shift it manually. Had a lot more pickup that way because we'll come to a stop and now we'll do it in just regular drive you'll see the difference here's regular drive you notice this has a lot less acceleration it shifts perfectly fine but if you really want to get up and go you can use the manual mode it's not a race truck but when you shift it yourself you can have a little more fun you can put it in second gear take off instead of first if it's slipping too much in first gives you a little more option heck the main reason people buy these things is because they can last forever they can haul all their crap and they know it's going to start they know the engine and transmission are going to last and it's high enough up in the air that they can do some water waiting if they have to and i'm sure this truck feels a lot more at home in nashville than it ever did in california <laughs> little four-cylinder engine but no shake at idle nice and smooth not sure if you compare it to other trucks other trucks can ride a lot smoother have a lot more power but really there's nothing out that it's going to last as long as this thing will probably last it's responsive enough for a little pickup truck it's not clunky you know it's not a race car <laughs> you don't go taking corners at 90 miles an hour now if you're a long-haul person like me and you want something that's going to last forever Take it wherever you want to go. Mainly, you're driving on the road. You can't beat a four-cylinder Toyota. Now, on the other hand, if you're thinking about pulling boats, you're worried about getting stuck, you might want four-wheel drive, the V6 engine, the higher level of technology that probably won't last quite as long. Mind you, it's still a Toyota. But if you're a long-haul person, you really can't beat a four-cylinder Toyota pickup. It's a classic small pickup it'll do what you want and then again small is a relative term this is a heck of a lot bigger than the old one that my son had that was like a 99 these small trucks have grown over time but if you want something like this you can't beat a four-cylinder tacoma you want something that could last for generations of people the gold standard of small pickup trucks and you can tell by the sales these things outsell the rangers so much as make your head spin all right, people are always whining. Toyota Corollas are boring. They run forever. They sold tens of millions of them. Well, here's a Toyota Corolla Apex, a new one. Does it look boring? No, it doesn't, but it's raining outside, so let's bring it in. Now, Toyota's well aware that people think Corollas are boring cars. So, they made this Toyota Corolla Apex. It's still a Toyota Corolla and reliable. Look under the hood. Under the hood is a two liter inline four. With the Toyota dynamic four system, there's the GDI high pressure pump. Now the economy Corolla's got a 1.8. I love them, they run forever, they get good gas mileage, but this thing gets 35 miles a gallon on a highway, so it gets pretty good gas mileage. It's not upped in power than any, it's the same basic system and transmission. What they did to make these fancy was not only what they look like, well, you'll notice it's lower than a normal Corolla, and it's got a beefed up suspension system. They handle like a dream, you'll see when you're driving around. Now the guy who owns this is single, and that's a big thing, because I know if I bought this car, my wife would kill me, because she'd say, I want the smooth ride. I don't want it handles great and rides rough. That's the only complaint she's got about her matrix is, it runs like a charm, goes down the highway smooth when the highway's smooth. But when you get bumpy roads, it rides bumpy because it's got more of a race suspension as this does. If you're thinking about getting one of these, take my advice. Road test the regular one, see how it rides, then road test one of these. If you like the way this handles and rides and you're single, buy it. But if you're married, let your wife drive it first because she may say, I don't like the way that thing rides. This is made for people who want to drive not as smooth of a ride. So maybe you're just like a really smooth ride you're gonna not like it. Now, it's nowhere bad as one of those old 
Suzuki Jeeps. And a customer had one of those samurai sidekick ones ages ago. He loves, he's all so much fun to drive around. Until he went from Houston to Miami and said, that thing rode like a washing machine, like a bucket. I'm selling it when I get back. I can't stand the thing. So, road test one. If you think about getting one, road test it. See if you like the ride or not. Because it's a big difference. As you can see, it's a typical Toyota Corolla with an engine that uses the modern oil, uses GF6 oil so it lasts longer. Everything about this is Toyota Corolla reliability. The thing might go three, four, five hundred thousand miles. And as we open it up, first thing you're gonna notice, it's a lot more stylish. But it is a four door, and as you can see, there's still a lot of space in the back. All right, if you want long life, get fabric seats. And as we start it up, Turn the wipers off, we don't need them inside. You'll see it's got all the modern conveniences. Turn the screen in here. And of course, it's got a nice backup camera so you can see all around. Much better than the earlier ones were. But yeah, it's got electric parking brake. They all have them these days, can't do anything about that. The white and black and gray, it's got a really sharp interior. It's an old school car. It's got mechanical seats going back and forth which I like because we got no stinking motor to go bad. They slide back and forth wherever you want, plenty of adjustments. It's just old school. Of course, it's got electric windows. I mean, it's not that old school. <laughs> Being a Corolla, you put this baby in gear. Does it shake? No, it's extremely quiet. Of course, it can go a long way. This baby's still got 312 miles of range, even though it's only got three quarters of a tank of gas left. Of course, it's modern. It's got all the controls on the steering column like most cars do these days. Now, a lot of people wind it said, I don't like the interior. It's kind of cheesy. Doesn't look cheesy to me, you know? It's a lot fancier than my old 81 Toyota Corolla I used to drive around in, you know? It's nice looking. I'm not whining about it. And if you notice down here, it's also got a sport mode. It's much zippier when you put it in sport mode and you can also turn the traction control off if you want and it tells you right here. And as we go to the trunk and pop it open, look at that. Maybe a little car. Oh man, it's got space. In this case, it's even got a machete. We don't know what that's for, but hey, he's prepared for anything. And really, when you look at the back, it's a snazzy car. I like the blacked out Toyota emblem and the seam. It's also got the black wheel, which unfortunately it hit a curb, but they're under warranty, so he's gonna get that fixed free. If you notice, it doesn't have a sunroof. You know what I say to that? Personally, I think sunroofs are the dumbest invention of mankind. What on earth do you need a sunroof for? In Houston, Texas, it's too hot. If you live where it rains, it rains. When they get old, they leak, and water gets in the car and ruins the electronics. They're just plain stupid. You want a convertible? Get a convertible. But sunroofs to me, eh, they're just plain stupid. And of course, your car is much more of a structure when you don't have a sunroof. If something did happen and you rolled over, it's going to do a lot better than a sunroof does sitting up there. It's just kind of a stupid thing. People get carried away. Some cars have two of them. This doesn't have any and it doesn't need them. Let's take it for a spin. Down she goes. Sounds exactly like my old Toyotas. They make that little boing sound. Notice when you put it in reverse, the parking brake turns itself off. I like that. First thing you notice, it's a pretty quiet car. Doesn't make much noise. Now it is lower to the ground, so you're not gonna be flying over speed bumps with this baby. That's part of the handling package. The lower you get, the better the handle. Now we're going over the big lump here, but it's not dragging or anything. Now it automatically goes to eco mode, so the heck with that, we'll put it in sport mode. There, now it's in sport mode, it'd be more fun to drive. And as we go over the bumpy Rhode Island roads, we'll see what it's like. And here we are hitting the bumps, and not horrible, but not great. You're gonna feel the bumps because it's got the sportier suspension. Like I said, if you really want a smoother ride, you want to get a regular Corolla. You don't want to buy the Apex. The Apex is for handling. And since it has the two liter engine instead of the smaller 1.8 Corolla engine, it's a bit zippier. Got some zip to it. A nice little acceleration. As you can slightly hear, it's got a little bit louder exhaust in it too. Makes a nice little roaring sound. But where it really comes into its own, that's steering and the suspension for handling. This thing is smooth. Now, it yelled at me because it has lane departure warning. I didn't put my turn signal on and I changed lane. So if you're a mad driver, you're gonna hear a lot of that as you change lanes without using your turn signal. But really, when you wanna go, step on the gas, it's got a good roar and it's got nice responsive steering. But 
you will feel those bumps. Now, I personally like the handling myself. I drive motorcycles around too, but my wife, she didn't like this. <laughs> she would want the smoother version. Just realize you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can have really tight steering and cornering, but it's gonna be a little bit rougher ride. You want a really cushy ride? It's not gonna be that strict in handling. It's gonna have a little more play, a little more oversteer, understeer. This thing is a lot more fun to drive. So those of you who are a little lead-footed, you'd rather get one of these than a plain old Corolla any day. And it does have the CVT transmission with the fake shifts. It doesn't actually shift gear, but it's programmed kind of feel like it's shifting gears. And if you're a fanatic, you can use the paddle shifters. There's one. Up we go, up again. Works perfectly fine. Just realize it is a CVT transmission. This isn't a dual clutch transmission where you get nice aggressive shifting by pushing the buttons. This is just computer simulation. So it's not like driving a standard transmission car like you can in a dual clutch transmission. And I found with this in sport mode, it's pretty aggressive as it is the way that it does the fake shifts for more acceleration. And as we go back in, you can see, no problem take corners. I took my hand off the wheel, it centered itself perfectly fine. Did you notice here with me driving, the gas mod rating went way down. As I said, you can't have your cake, you need it too. You can go zip, 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 but your gas mod's gonna go down. Or if you want good gas mod, you would turn off the sport mode like I just did. Now it's in eco mode and it will get better gas mods. It's still got, you know, a little bit of a zip to it. It's a lot more fun to drive in sport though. So if you're wondering about the Toyota Apex, now you know what a Corolla can be to be a bit zippier, look a lot snazzier. They're not super expensive. The man just bought it for 27 k And interesting enough, if he wanted to get a fancy Corolla, he would have had to wait forever. But they had these on this floor. He's having a lot of fun driving it around. And as you can see, it's a nice looking car. Zippier suspension system, and it's got the two liter instead of the 1.8 liter engine. So you can make a decision. Do you want a little snazzier Corolla? Because you think the other ones are all boring? Or you want to get a little bit better gas mileage and you want a little smoother ride? You could go for the fancier Corolla and wait longer. The people who are speed demons, they don't have to wait for these things. I just know it's a Toyota Corolla. It'll probably last forever. Looks a lot better than the old ones did. Gets phenomenal gas mileage. Handles really nice. If you want the handling, I definitely would go for one of these. But my wife wouldn't like it. <laughs> and I think I'll stick with her. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.